Swamp Thing readers were also reading horror writers like Stephen King. King led a whole host of horror writers to the top of the bestseller list. His novels were consistently number one, although he only came in number three on a list of the five most censored authors in American public schools. Nancy, you told me about the list. Who were the other four authors? Nancy's my nano cyber computer. Amongst these four authors, is there any common theme, any shared political beliefs, a, a common social agenda? Thank you, Nancy. I think we'll just shut you off. Who asked you? Horror's always had a bad rap because people figured if you're writing about evil, you must be promoting it. Comics have had censorship problems because they were always considered children's entertainment. When adult comics started coming out, parents and teachers didn't realize they were for adults. Science fiction has long been labeled a genre for juveniles. What that meant was that it's okay to take a life, but not to make a life. No sex, please. We're skittish. Science fiction used to have big troubles with censorship. Uh, it used to be that John Campbell's secretary would cut all the sex out of the stories as it came across her desk. There's a famous story of how Cyril Cornbluth wrote into a story a, a scientist who had a, a cat, a tomcat, and later on in the story, Cyril made passing reference to a ball-bearing mousetrap and slipped it past the secretary. He dined out on that story for months. I had a character named Heinzelman the Hell Horse. And uh, the editor changed the name Heinzelman the Hell Horse to Atman the Scourge. I don't think he wanted to offend any Jewish people in the audience. And uh, uh, that's the only real, I just kind of, I didn't like it, but I, I didn't make any. And another time, there was an uh, episode in. Uh, Charlwell's chickens, I think, where the, there was a the protagonist was a girl, and and she got in a kind of a, oh, a situation with a young man, and they kind of curtailed some of the elements of that a little bit, and uh, cut a paragraph or so. I wasn't pretty innocent stuff. How did you feel about having your stories changed? Neither one of those cases bothered me. I I could see that in both cases they didn't want to have a gang of angry readers writing in this call them anti-semitics or or have people think they were erotic magazines and so there's some reason to some of this milder forms of censorship spider have you ever been censored until very recently i would have told you that no i've never had any trouble with censorship in science fiction and indeed i can't say i've been censored but my most recent paperback, uh, Callahan's Lady, takes place in a brothel in Brooklyn. And since it's part of a series of stories uh, originally set in a bar called Callahan's Place, it's a spin-off from that series, I just assumed that the stories would have a home in the same magazine that had published the Callahan stories. And I was very surprised to get back a, a, a sad rejection letter from the editor saying, I loved the story, enjoyed it a great deal, had a wonderful time. Of course, I can't buy it. My readers would never stand for a story with this much sex in it. I was dismayed to hear that, and I, I, I hope he's wrong. I hope this is simply an incorrect impression on his part, but, well, the second worst thing you can do is get into an argument with an editor, and the very worst thing you can do is to win it. So I tipped my hat and agreed with him politely. On the other hand, it hasn't seemed to hurt sales any. Callahan's Lady has been the most successful yes. of my works to date. It was on the Walden Books bestseller list for four months. So the readers don't want, it, want censorship. Uh, whether the editors are going to impose it or not is a a matter for the future to decide. I sure hope not. I think, uh, in general, that the writer has to, uh, and the uh, uh, editor have to have a conference. And the writer has to say, uh, or the editor is going to say, Henry, we're going to censor this. Uh, what do you say about that? I don't like it. Well, what are you going to do about it? take it away, give back the money. And, uh, well, I don't want to do that either. I want you to print it the way I printed it and leave my ideas in there. Can't do that, Henry. Take it or leave it. Give me the money and take your manuscript or we print it and censor it. Well, this is clear cut. This is uh, no reason why it shouldn't be that way. If you were writing something for uh, the uh, Baptist uh, guide or something like that and you wrote a big article in there justifying Darwin or something like that you, and they wanted to censor it you said no I want to do it this way 
you wouldn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> Let's talk to an editor. I'll ring up Mary Ann Nielsen. Mary Ann is the editor of On Spec, Canada's only English language speculative fiction magazine. Mary Ann? Mary Ann, it's Commander Rick. Do you consider yourself to be a censor? As an editor, am I a censor? I guess in a philosophical sense, you'd have to say, yes, I am, because I decide what goes in and what doesn't. I would say, though, that on a practical sense, no. There are certainly some magazines f that have a mandate not to publish, for example, anything that has sex or violence in it. Um, and if you believe that people should not be exposed to those things, then you're certainly going to not buy stories that have those things in, to, in them. I believe, however, in my opinion only, that people have the right to read anything, and no matter how objectionable I personally find it. I don't believe that there should be violent pornography, for example. I think the people who make that stuff should be hunted down and put in jail. But it's so difficult. Now, <laughs> getting away from that really horrid stuff. In terms of the stories, that, for example, that we buy in, in, in on Spec magazine, we have had people come up to us and say, well, if it, I have some swear words in my story or I have a sex scene in my story, should I write it out? Well, goodness, no. <laughs> if that's integral to your story, leave it in. I mean, if that's what it takes to express what's happening to your characters, if it's not gratuitous, and even if it's gratuitous, <sighs> We'll tell you if we think it's gratuitous, but, you know, it's your decision how you want to do this. You're the writer. This is your story you're telling. We'll, what we edit is bad writing. Darn, I was going to send you some stuff I'd written. Thanks, Marianne. Before a comic or a novel reaches the bookshelf, it's been scanned by a lot of responsible people who worry about gratuitous sex, violence, racism, stereotyping, and so on. The first censor is the artist, him or herself. Now, I, I don't mean to say that an artist censors their imagination, but they do make creative choices. Every single violent scene in V is done as subtly as I possibly can. Uh, there's a lot of use of shadow and imagery. And I never, ever show once throughout the whole of V um, any detail of violence. It's all uh, implicit rather than explicit, and that goes for the sex as well. The issue of the question that dealt with um, this racist character. Question number 15. Uh, and part of the, the visual imagery we had to deal with that I had to draw was uh, the, it opened up with a black guy being lynched. And it kind of made me wince, you know. And in the end, I almost didn't do it because, of course, obviously, folks, I have problems with black people being lynched. Uh, and I don't know if I wanted to be a party of even drawing that kind of thing. In the end, the story went out. It was such a good story. You know, that scene had to be in there. How did other black comic creators react? It's really interesting. They didn't. No, I can't remember, aside from my friends, saying, you know, good job. 